I'll have to edit this. I'll have to edit it because I wasn't ready. If you're seeing this, it means this picture's worked out. Um, New Year's Eve. You're still, I'm still waiting for all the results to come in for what picture you want to do on Monday, which is still coming, by the way. You, by the time you get this video, it might have gone. Um, and the squirrel's dropping slightly away, so I thought I would do the squirrel as an extra, so that you, you can have two. And what I'm going to do is do it with pastels. It's a long time since I've drawn with pastels. Um, I never use it on the big sheets if I'm doing the big ones because I put the I put the normal pastel on that heavy that a pastel pencil just doesn't work with it and uh, so if you want to do a smaller picture pastel pencils are more like a are more like a drawing you can draw them and you can still fill pastel in but I wouldn't be using any of me um, me heavy new pastels on this because it's just a small sort of drawing area so. I've had pastel pencils and things for years, um, but I just thought I would give it a go with the pastel pencil. With the pastel pencils, I haven't said that enough pastel pencils. I've got loads here. Wait a second, I'll put the other camera on. One second. We get there, you know, eventually. I'm just... Uh, I'll just rotate the camera a bit. There we go. Everything's just in the way a bit, that's all. Right, so these are the pencils. I've had them, I've had them a long time. There's different types. Um, that's Karen Dash. Uh, and that is... That is Stabilio Carbothello. And I've had... You can see how... These are, I've had these years. Um, got them from the art shop and stuff and you can see how they're very hard can you see the stub on there they're very hard to, to get a point onto them they won't work in a pencil sharpener it, all it does is it just breaks down I might, I might actually get that one sharper but the trouble is with pastel pencils once you get sharp the moment you press on bang you know so i've got them i've got some other ones um which are these which are pit pastel made by faber castell so i've got them as well so we're gonna so we're gonna have a go at the squirrel and uh i'll keep dropping bits it i'm gonna use, also use this pastel pan pastels now again these really would be more for um bigger pictures um and I would put them, I used to put them on soft, but they, they're good for portraits if you were doing portraits. Now, again, I've had these, I got them in the art shop at Darlington a lot of years ago. Um, and see, when I first was doing it, I used to do lots of, um, lots of portraits of people and animals in the olden days. Um, but then I got away from it and I just started doing bigger pastels, just using quite loose Chalk. So, I'm gonna go back and do one and see what it works out like. If it doesn't work out, the sun's coming in. Can you see the sun coming in? It's very bright, but I'll have to continue. This is uh, this is I've, I've got pastel papers of different thicknesses, different types. This is uh, what's called uh, pastel mat. It's only on like one surface. It's on a little bit of board. I don't know if you can see that, and it's sort of instead of the this second this stuff is where i've been messing around this is pastel like sandpaper like we did the um the two uh, sunsets on and i was just having a go at, at, at something with that more like a sandpaper where this is more velvety it's more like it feels soft but you know velvety so what I'm going to do is try and do a, a, the pastel. So I'm going to draw in lightly the squirrel and then see if I can build it up. I'm not going to put a background in. I'm just going to use this dark grey as a background. So I'm just going to draw, draw it in with just a, a little light grey pencil. 
and just get a feel of the shape of it and then uh, and then we can see where we at with it afterwards so I'll just draw it in lightly to get started and then show you so I want the, the ears to be I'll have to use a lighter one for you so that you can see it um, I'll use a, a very light yellowy one just so that you can see it so I want the ears to be coming about here. Can you see that all right? Let's have a look. Make sure you can see it, yeah. I'll, I'll go in when we do more detail, but I just want the ears to be about here sort of thing. And you can just put it in lightly and you can adjust it afterwards because you, you can rub out pastel pencils. So I've got the ear coming down like that along the back. The front of the head coming down there like that. I'm just going to move things so you can see. So the front of the head coming down along like that. And just underneath the ear coming down there. A little bit round there. And then the, the two meet. And then it goes into the more warm orange bit. And you can just see it to the shoulder. Just going up to the tree there. So you've got that coming up along there. I like that down the side a little bit to the other eye, the other eye would be sort of about there I would think and then round the back of the head and the ear just going up like that round there and coming down to join the eye like that and then its body, well you can put the eye it'll give you a, an idea so if you imagine this, the right hand side of the eye being about level with the right hand side of the ear and if you just the outside bit, if you just sort of draw that in along there like that and fetch it forward, that's the outside patch and then your nose would, that, that, look, that other eye could just be fraction farther down I think so just put that a fraction farther down and then the nose would be around here, this sort of light area for the the nose. I'm only drawing it in very light till we get an area. And like I said, pastels really, um, when I when I do them, I use a, a lot bigger paper and, and work on them bigger. This is a small one just to see how, just to see if this paper works more than anything. So you've got the eye there, you've got the, the, the sort of the sense of the snout there and the mouth would be about here. I'm not drawing it massively, I'm just sort of getting it in. So the, the light under the chin would be about there. So if you've got that going out there like that, coming back and coming down to there. And then you've got the white, the white there and its arm top of its shoulder just coming up to that tree again and the back of its shoulder just sort of coming out from there down there and into the bottom and then you could draw the tree in so they've got the tree branch going up there like that coming down there out there and down there so that, that's basically just, I think that's near enough, just getting the shape. Um, now what you want, rather than drawing all the lines in, you can you can actually get a, a base colour and you can use the pan pastels for this. Um, it's only small, so I'm, I'm not going to sort of rub them in with my finger. I'm just going to use a brush. Um, I'll just get a soft brush. Just a normal watercolour brush and I'm just going to build this pastel up but not heavy. So the, I, don't, I don't normally rub pastels in uh, when I'm doing the big ones, I like them on the top. But with this type of thing and when I used to do portraits, I would smooth them in so that you, 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 you didn't have that much chalk on. So I'm going to use them and build up a, a sort of a layer and then uh, all the art is like a... a I don't know if you can see, can you see how dusty it is there? You see how dusty that is, like there. And this is a grey of some sort. Wait a second, it's a long time since I've been Payne's grey, Payne's grey. And I'm 
I'm dropping pastel all over now. Right, so what I'm going to do is just use the grey to sort of build up, and I'm using a brush. It's very, very dusty. It's like pastel dust. And I'm going to sort of just dust in the area just behind the back of the ear, like that. I'll zoom in a little bit for you so that you can uh, see it in a second. Find the zoom button. I've lost the zoom button. There it is. I'll zoom in a little bit. I don't want to go too close at this stage, but I'll zoom in a little bit for you. So it's just, it's like a dust. You can see the dust. So you're just sort of rubbing in and getting the, the area where you are. I know it's got browns in and everything, but I'm just building up sort of a layer just underneath. Like that. Like that. And you can do into the eye a bit as well. Just get building up this sort of... Now, what you can do is... I'm going to put some lighter colour here, then you can rub your finger and blend it. Now, I know it's lighter up here, it's not so grey, but I'm just going to put an undercoat just to build the shadows up. Just over there. And I'm just brushing it in. There's dust all over. I will blend that in afterwards. So you've got the, the, the sort of the, the grey feels just here. There's a little bit in on the inner ear just there. There's also this paper, this pastel paper comes with, each sheet is covered with like uh, this plasticky this green stuff. I suppose you, you can, in a second, I suppose you can use it for resting on. Yeah, you can, but it's too, too big. I'll get it wrong, but I'm gonna tear it in bits. You can use it for sort of resting on like that. There you go. Right, carry on with the, the grey and just put a little sense of the grey into there with that. A little bit, just just dabbing it in just round the eye area a little bit of this grey. And it really is just a matter of pushing on. If you're doing a bigger one, you could put it on a bit stronger with your finger and, and rub on. But if, if you put, put it on with a, your finger on here, you will probably just go out the lines. So I'm just getting the grey around there, a little bit just down here. I'll do the branch as a separate thing. Uh, and then I'm going to make it darker just round the underneath of the chin. That sort of comes over that shadow onto the onto the shoulder and just goes in there and sort of curve it round. Like that. As I said, I used to actually take me, take pastels into work and when I was doing night shifts sometimes. And because I, I, I was a chemist in the labs and uh, it, blokes would come in and, and sit while I drew them in lunch times and stuff. And I just used to do sketches of them on pads with pencils, pastel pencils. And I'm talking, I'm talking way, way back. Um, <laughs> Talking around about the mid 70s when I was about 10 year old. I was good at 10. Right, so pulling that down there and just sort of fetching, building up the shadow like that. And it actually would get darker, but we use the pencils and get darker just to the to the right hand side of the tree stump. And you can put a little bit just coming down that tree stump, just down here. The fact I've zoomed in, sorry, the fact I've zoomed in means at some point I don't know whether you're seeing it all, all right, yeah. I've got to be careful because I know you, you yell at me when I'm off camera. Right, so it's just like a dust, it's, all, it, it's really just a dust. Like that into there and bit by bit we'll build the colour up. So you can put the dust just down the inside edge, just down there. Right, I'm just 
I don't know how to clean the brush. I'll, I'll just use a bit of tissue just to get the dust off the brush. And I'm going to fetch in a little bit of the brown in. Just, I don't know how to clean the brush. I'll, I'll just use a bit of tissue just to get the dust off the brush. And I'm going to fetch in a little bit of the brown into it. So I'll just put the cap back on the grey. I don't know, even know where you get the. I suppose you can get them from anywhere. These were these were from the art shop at Darlington. A long time. I'll tell you what. I'll long ago they were. The the art shop wasn't in where it is now. It was around the corner in Duke Street. So get some brown. Can you see? It's lighter than you think. Down there it looks a bit dark, but it's lighter than you Can you see the dust as you move the brush around? So you just got that dust. So I'm going to use the dust into the, that area there where I put the paint's grey in. Just go over it and into here. And the whole idea is to build a, a, a blend that you can then add detail to. So I'm going to put it into into this area here, coming down round the eye, down to the sort of the top of the snout, just there. So round the eye and down into here. And all I use is this brush, and then we build up the hairs afterwards. Like that. It doesn't matter if you go over it because you can use the pencils to sharpen up afterwards. It's just a matter of building a surface up. Fetch that round that side a little bit, round that outside edge. And down to sort of blend into here. Like that. A little bit more just coming down there and there and a little bit of brown not much just coming from under the eye outwards down that area a little bit up to there and then you can use the brown into this just to fill it in a little bit more Like that to shadow that really cast by the, the squirrel's head onto it that's fine a little bit up there should have darkened it up just a bit into its other arm there Right now, the more warm bits and the lighter greys will, will just, I think actually I can go back, I don't have, I've only got a limited set of colours. I'll just go back to the Payne's grey one a second, because I just want to fetch in a little bit of grey up here into the ear. into there just a little bit more grey into there so I'm just taking it to the edges a little bit I mean it's not going to be grey it's going to be lighter because we're doing it on a grey paper I know the picture the photographs on a green background but we're doing it on a grey so we need to make sure it's lighter on these areas like that so I've got that I'm going to use a lighter one now um, and this is yellow orca tint. I have to look at them to see what they, what they are. And I don't know what that is. I think I spilled water on it a long time ago. And that's sort of gone rock hard. So I'm going to use this yellow orca tint and just put in the lighter bits up to here. So it's going to the outside edge of the ears. Not the, not the fine hairs, but just lighting up. And you can pull it down into the grey a little bit so it blends in. 
and you're just lightening these areas up a little bit. Well, the very highlight around the edge, which we'll you use a pencil for, all you're doing here is building up a, a sense of blending. And I'm going to rub them in because if you don't, the, the dust will just float around. So I'm going to actually just get it in there and then use my finger. I suppose, I don't know if I've got a blender or something. I might have a bit of a blending thing. You can buy blenders. Um, I've got something here, but it's probably too big. I've had that a long time, like a bit of foam. I'll leave it out and try it, but I normally just use my fingers. It's just because we're doing it smaller, it's quite easy to sort of rub it uh, out of the out of the image of it. If you see pastels, generally, if you see pastels, that, that's these animal ones that's really highly detailed and they've probably been, been done quite big sorry I'm off the screen there they've probably been done quite big there's a little bit just into there and I'm going to do a big one um, because Peter the, the lad who photographed this the wildlife he's, uh, lives in Bishop he goes to Africa quite a lot. Um, doing things. And one of his pictures, one of his pictures of, uh, I'll have to find it out and put it up. One of his pictures of cheetahs won, won quite a few awards and was in a big exhibition down in London. And he's, he's sent me a, a, a one of the ape or a, a rang or whatever, I can't remember. I'll have to ask him what it is because I'm not. And, I said, can I do that? He said, yes, you can have a go at that, do it. He said, I'd like to see it done as a painting. So I'm going to have a go at that and put that as a video as well. But it's a, it'll be a long one because there's a lot of detail on that one. So rather than you sitting watching all the time, I'll do it as a video and then you can... Uh, and then you can... Just, uh, sorry, you can watch it in your own time and use what you wanted of it. I'm just going to put a little bit of the yellow walker underneath the, coming from underneath the chin there, like that. And sort of dust that down into the, the neck. But Peter goes, he goes a, a lot Africa goes all over. He goes to Africa. Uh, one we did one first night was two little boys, one racing on a bike. That was one of his, a part of one of his that he took. A little bit just under the chin, under the like the, the mouth, like that, and a little bit just to the outside of the snout, like that. You're right. I'm gonna stop. No, are you all right? Do you want something, right? Do you want something? No, just wondered what I'm just doing a to. video. I'm not, there's nobody actually... Oh, face powder are you using now? There's nobody actually... <coughs> I'll have to edit that. <coughs> nobody actually um, watching or I'm making a video. All oh, right. I'll just edit it out. Right, wait, you're not doing a class as such, are you? No, no, I'm, I'm just doing, a, I'm just doing it as a video and then people will have it if they want it afterwards. Right, what you do like. A squirrel that Peter Haygarth sent us. It's, oh, right. it's, uh, it's part of the race where the, they wanted a picture. Squirrels <laughs> dropped behind, so I'm doing it as well. <laughs> and shut the door. Shut the door? Yeah, then if you're doing anything, there's no loud noises. Oh, right, I'm not leaving. What time you want for lunch? One o'clock ish, half one ish. Hey? Half one ish. That'll do. Right. Yeah. Just when you're hungry. I'm also you're hungry. Drinking coffee and eating chocolates. Yeah, right, so I'm just couldn't get back to where we were. That was at about, I don't know what timing on it. I'll get back to the picture. So, yeah, so blending in, and I haven't got any, wait a second, orangey type colour in pastel. So I'm going to put a bit of red in, type colour in pastel. So I'm going to put a bit of red in. 
put a, just a bit of red in and then a bit of yellow ochre and yellow into it I've got the red and the sunshine's very bright at this time of the year into here I've got my lights on but the sunshine's so bright I'm just going to dust oh it's quite strong that I'm just going to dust it in very lightly just following the floor of the way the fur lies put some into there put some into there and then this is the way you re I mean you can draw it all but this is a, a good way of just uh, if you haven't got these things, it's just a matter of using the side of your pencils, I suppose. Or a proper... I could go and get me pastel sticks. I mean, if you actually use a razor blade to, to sharpen your pastel pencil, you would get lots of bits of pastel dropping off that you could save. And do up. So, just into there like that. And now I'm going to change to a... Where's the middle? To an orangey... Uh, to a bit of yellow, cadmium yellow. It sounds quite solid, this. It shows you how long it is since I've had this opened. Can't even get the lid off. It's sealed solid. I'll tell you what, I'll leave it and just use some yellow orca. A second yellow orca. Yeah, it's, this is a darker yellow orca. I'll use it. I kind of get the lid off the yellow. I'll have to try and loosen it off afterwards. So this is like a yellow orca. And I'm just going to bleed it, bleed it in, dust it in round the bottom of the eye and dust it in the red that we that we did. And I'm sort of dusting it in. I'm trying to move this paper up the road of the sunshine right? It's the shadow of my arm, isn't it? You'll have to put up with it. Dust this in. I'm only going to go so far with this at this point, and then I'm going to do it after continue afterwards when the probably tomorrow morning when the sun isn't as bright. It's about this time. Normally we finish by now, half past twelve, which is that's when the sun starts to come round. So I'll do this. I'll do the dusting in and show you that and then tomorrow morning I'll do more of the detail so you can see that you're just sort of building up this sort of lighter area with the this is yellow orca I think it wants a bit more white in so the yellow orca just a bit lower down there and blended into the red Blending it in like that, just soft blend. You're gonna all the all the, the the lines you're gonna do with the pencils, hard lines. You're just sort of getting this under colour, really undertone, ready for it. Um, I don't need to go into them. Do a little bit just up to there, just in the around the ears a little bit there. So if you left it as a it's just the grey paper uh, and drew into it you would have quite a lot of the grey showing so this way you can build up depth of colours just underneath put that top on there and then I'm just going to use this light a bit here just to sort of put a little sense of light just down into there I'm trying to hide the snow here from you just dusting that bit of light in. Um, I can just just round the eyes a little bit like that, just on the outside of the eye with this sort of whatever colour it is. It is a burnt sienna, a burnt sienna tint. So it's like a white tint. It's like when you, like I said, when you get the pastel, the pastel chalks. 
burnt sienna can go from very light to very dark and strong. All the colours have tints in them. So you get, you get tints into the, all the colours. So you can get, like, all, all your colours you want are tinted down to different numbers. Because you don't mix it with white, so you just buy the, the tints. And when I, I don't, I, I don't see them now. When I see the pastels now advertised, I don't see the, them advertised as number tens and tints. They don't seem to be. But when I was doing pastels back in the Boer War, you you bought you bought the colours in various sticks of tints. So when I was doing portraits, I would get the pinks in tints going from like zero up to ten through the various colours, and the same with the yellow orchids. So that you, you knew what colour tint you wanted for a particular skin tone. But you don't seem to see that. I've, I've never noticed it. I've never noticed it being advertised as that now. Right, so I think we're all right. Just a little bit back in the nose. Right, so I'll put the top on. If I, oh, I haven't got a top for that one, I've even lost the top. I'll just dust my brush off. Just be brush off, and then you can use a finger. You can use a finger, or you can use a little bit of fur foam. I've got some of these foam wedges. I'll just try it, and if it doesn't work, I'll use my finger. I'll close in a bit. Come, come in closer for you. So I'm just trying to move all these pencils out the road. Right, I'm coming closer for you. Just get to the pic picture. Sorry, I'm just, I, I didn't intend to doing this, I just fancy doing it while I was with it. Right, so I'm going to try this. If it doesn't work, I'll uh, use my finger. I'm going to use my finger. So you just use the softness of your finger and you rub the pastel in with your finger. And this paper apparently is good for holding the pastel so that you can draw over it. It's actually fat because I've dusted it on with a brush, there's not that much. There's not that much actual dust kicking around. So you can just work it through with your finger, blending it in. While you're blending it in, follow the direction of how it would lie. It looks dead smooth, this paper, like velvet, but we can, when I'm doing it, I can feel the, the grain of the paper with my finger. And like I said, follow the direction. What I'll do is I'll do the squirrel uh, and then we'll do the tree afterwards. So because we've blended it in and flattened it, there's no dust around. If you do get some dust set or some dropping off, don't wipe it with your finger, just blow it. Because if you do uh, wipe with your finger, you can be dead sure that you will, you will have dust all over paint all over the place. Um, I'll just draw in a couple of sort of guidelines for the tree, the side of the tree trunk. Just a, a, a feel, feeling, I'll just zoom out a bit. Too close in there now. You can see how bright the sun shines. Just a, a few sort of cracks in the the bark, the texture. Just to give you an idea of the guide. And I'm sort of using the pencil on its edge, on its side, not the point, I'm using the side. So it just fills in a little bit like that. And then you can go in with the darker pencil and you can start coming down the edge, the outside edge of the trunk, so in other words, into the, the squirrel. 
and you can get a clean dark edge. Down there and we'll lighten the edge of the trunk up with a, a lighter pencil. Now that dark isn't, you don't leave that as a hard line, that you sort of just tease outwards into the squirrel. Just using sort of the point and teasing that out. I mean you could do this, you can do this with coloured pencils. Um, you don't have to use pastels, you can use coloured pencils on this paper as well. The only problem there would be is trying to get the, the, the whites. If you're going to use coloured pencils, sorry there's a lot of shadows, if you're going to use coloured pencils I would suggest using a lighter paper so that the white can shine through. I find with the coloured pencils sometimes you can't get them. Or draw with the coloured pencils and then use a, a, a stick of white a stick of white um, pastel just to, to put that sort of white highlight in and breast in. So that would be the underneath. So you'd be coming from underneath there like that and darkening this area down here like that. And I think I'm going to leave it at that and then come back in the morning probably um, to start putting detail in because I, I can't work with this light like that. I, I've either got too much shadow when I put my arm across it or too bright there. So I'll leave it at that um, and then I'll come back to it tomorrow so but you won't know it's tomorrow because you don't even know what time it is. It's about quarter to one Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, about quarter to one in the afternoon. Right so I'm going to leave it like that and then come back and start putting detail in you know the whiskers and the, all the all the fur and all the hairs and all the tree uh, so right I shall stop now right I've zoomed in a bit uh, just so you can see it and now I'll start using pencil so I'm going to use a black just to start getting the the darker parts in so see how these points work I've never sort of done this for a long time I don't think I can zoom in anymore but we'll see so I'm just using the black just to start creating the, the darker texture on the back of the, the back of the ear there it's a little bit in there so it's just little strokes because you've already got color underneath so it's just sort of layering short strokes up, up there. I don't know if this is going to work. This light seems a bit strange this morning. It's just the point, just coming down the point. A little bit more just in that little curve that's just outside and then there's the same sort of dark bits just flicking over to that side it's really small this picture so that's why the pencil sticks are looking a bit um, heavy on them as opposed to as opposed to thinner I can't get the strokes any thinner so I'm just turning to a brown now to go in between these and slightly over them. As I say, you just build up the, the layers with very short strokes. A few lighter ones just down into here. And then a few just round that outside edge bit. And down into here, this darker bit here. Just moving the strokes down.
and fuel just in here as well. Like I said, it's because you're doing small pencil, maybe if I hold it farther upright, so that I get more of the point. A bit of paper underneath just to rest on. A few little browner ones just there. Like this, this one, the grey that we washed in with just a few loose of flicks just there. And it's just a matter of, I mean, just using a lighter orca now, just to fill in, and especially down that side, uh, outside edge of the ear. Just there's a little, little bit of light just there. looks a bit funny on the screen, I don't know what it is, what's what causing that though, the, lamp, the lights are fully on, but it does look a bit um, fuzzy, pixelated. I'll continue on. I was going to stop it, but I'll just continue on and see if it works out. If it doesn't, then I'll give it. I mean, the, the thing will work out. It's just that the, the, it, instead of blending, it all looks a bit exaggerated each line. just there and it's actually a little bit lighter just to the edge before the real light comes in just to the that left hand edge of the ear there a little bit lighter there Go back to a grey, a lighter grey, because this it's definitely. In fact, a, dark, a darker grey might be better. It's definitely uh, grey in there. Just sort of using the point and pushing the strokes up in the direction of the finer hairs. It doesn't show up that much because it's nearly this pencil is nearly the same colour as the as the paper. But I'm going to use a lighter one in a second. I'll have to blend in some lights over top of it. Right. 
Okay. I am, but it's alright. You want coffee? Yeah. So I've got a, a, a sort of a, a real sort of light orca here, very light. I'm just flicking in the outside edges of that ear, the, the front bits that's just catching the light just there. And a few little bits just there where, where the light's catching that outside edge of the ear. As I said, I think you can use it as a point, but I think you'll find it easier. It's hard to keep these um, pencils sharp, which is what I've found. I think you would find it easier doing a bigger picture, which I'm going to do. So the, in perspective, the, 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 sh the pencil lines a lot, look a lot finer. I'm just sort of holding the pencil upright a little bit. And apparently this paper you can layer it on quite well without it filling up. Because a lot of the pastel papers fill up quite easy. It's you can only it's the same with the coloured pencil. You can only only get so much so many layers on before it won't take and the pencils are definitely like that. But it won't take any more edges. I'll have to find a, a new blade to find because the pencil sharpener doesn't work it just breaks them off the, the electric pencil sharpener so I'll have to get a, a, a new blade just to keep the point sharp I've got this but I don't think that works I've got this a while back for just uh, doing charcoal sharpening charcoal you can do it like that side of it and sharpen it but it's a bit rough. It causes more muck than anything. Right, so it's just really just trying to flick little lights into the in most of these dark so like little stubs. So you just because they're not the sort of long hairs there, they're just sort of a little grains if you know what I mean just into there just and just sort of fetch them out into the light a bit so drag some of the fine hairs outwards at the edges the longer A little bit of light around the outside edge there. This will find Touches. I mean, on the actual picture, the background is darker, so the the lights will stand out just that little bit more. I suppose I could have darkened the background a bit, but. I just wanted to see really what these pencils were like. And two little finer hairs just sticking out like that. Let's go back to the darker browns. A 
few more darker accents in there. Just around that outside of the ear there. One or two just little flicks. Right, just get a white one and just try just making a few more highlights just on the edges of the ears, just with a few finer hairs here and there. Just a little bit of more light around the outside edge. Not so long on the strokes. Just sort of dotting it in and then you can just flick a few finer edges out there. Quite a lot more light just round that outside lip there. Yeah, just a few little dots here and there. And then one or two just longer individual hairs so you can sort of Pull them around a bit so you get a, a, a sense of longer hairs just from the top of this edge here, like that. I think that's it. It looks a bit more exaggerated. I think I might just have to go over the uh, over the darker bits with just a little bit more lighter orca, just to sort of tone them down a little bit so they're not jumping out so dark. So I'm just stabbing more than anything, just stabbing in little bits of short hairs. along the outside edge. What you want to do with these is sort of blur them. Just get the lighter one again. You just want a sort of a blur going away to the side here. So just like a, a light arc. So it's just the, the camera where the camera's focused on the eye obviously. Anything behind that is just blurred a bit. So you can just blur the, the edges just behind the cheek really. Use the dark again and just get that. This is like black, just get that darker area just going in up there. Grey. 
you sort of take the grey into it to, to sort of blur it out a bit so that the black doesn't jump out so much. First of all, just use a, an orca just around the outside edge, just to get that light edge coming down towards where the eye is. Just get rid of that dark patch there. So you've got this like lighter edge just going around the outside edge of the ear there. light just into there I'll tell you one thing I found with this paper it curls up it, uh, I think it's because it's laminated it's got a back on it it curls it sort of lifts up on the outside edges and I've noticed the whole pad is doing the same thing as soon as the wrapping come off the pad the whole, the whole thing started to uh, curl up. I got some lighter sort of greys in there, so just uh, just into here. So it's a more greyed feel just here. Just across the, that top part. We'll put some lights in in a minute. We're just getting that grid edge into there. A bit of orca in there. Now just develop that orca line and just sort of develop it out a little bit round the edges. This is like a, a very pale, very pale yellow orca. Might have it too bright there. I'll just finish it off and then I'll just tone it down a bit. I'll just get the orca and just go into it a bit. So it just tones it down. Don't want that to be that bright because it, it's just turned away so just scramble into it with a little bit of orca. It look it's looking brighter on there because the lights I've had to put the lights on so bright because it's dark outside so this looks a bit more all the lines look a bit more exaggerated than what they are. So a little bit of white and just flick in some stronger white just around that top edge and a few smaller stabs into the greys into them greys there I'm just going to go back to the very light orca and just put some lighter flicks out with the orca. Rather than strong white. And you don't need to really press on, you can just sort of flick with the edge of the, the pencil. Just touching in. Excuse me, and I'll go back to the white. And sort of a curl just there. Coming sort of from there and then just sort of curling odd 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 ones, but basically that lighter area is just curling around in there. So lighten that up. So I'm gonna rub it in a bit so it blends a bit more. And 
the odd little bit out there and then finally just darken down with the black just round them edges there Like I say, it looks a bit more contrasty on the, on the screen than what it actually is. That's all right. Right, so across the top of the head, what we want now is a, a sort of a, a, a brown, a neutral brown, and just start building up from the eye, from the outside of the eye, just start building up lines, following the angle of the head. So you just come from round where the eye is and just lifting up short, short hairs, just little flicks. I'm having to hold the paper down because it's sort of, it's wanting, it's, it's wanting to lift up all the time. Just sort of short stabs. You can tell this with by rubbing it in. You don't get it all over the place, and this sort of uh, visqueen stuff stops you from resting on it totally. Um, when I when I do big ones, the same with the, the acrylics. When I'm doing big ones on canvas, I have a a mile stick um, so I can rest on it. It's not a, it's not a I'll, I'll get it out later and show you. It's, it's a modern mild stick. I've had it for a while. But I've got that modern easel that you can see, that metal easel that's behind me. I've got the mild stick with it as well. And it sort of adjusts in length. You can sort of slide it in or out. And you need that. Especially if you're doing the... the um, especially if you're doing the heavy, thicker chalks or acrylics. You, you need that mastic just to be able to lean on when you want to come to do some detail into there. So I'm taking this sort of round the eye. This is around the outside edge of the eye, down to where the, the snout's going to be. And I'm just literally stabbing in little lines. There's on one here and there, but it gets lighter just here. It's just above the snout and up, up into the head. And these eyelashes, and they get darker just going around the outside edge there. But I'll come down to that in a minute. So what I'm going to do now is just start lightening, putting lighter strokes in, especially as you're coming down into this area here. To the sort of the right right hand side of that eye just lightening that up a little bit more you've got an undercoat because we put an under, undercoat on so you don't have to this is why this is why you sort of blend the color in so you don't have to do every stroke Orchids, you know, what you also want is like raisin because it's it's more grey feel as it's going around the top and more sort of warmer as it's getting round the, the top of the snout there. And you've just got to keep putting these layers in so they overlap each other. If you were doing a line or anything, you'd have a lot longer hair fixture on that. Just lighten it up coming around that other side of the eye. Again, I'll come back to that. I'll just keep this uh, keep this moving with a, a, 
a little bit more grey into there so it just feels just takes the, the, the sort of the the warmth out of it a bit just gives it that little bit more grey grayed off feel I've got to darken just above the snout we'll do that afterwards And then the, the, the light orca, just just light touches, just on the top edge, just flicking up for the, the finer hairs here and there, just across the top of the head. And then just into there around the fuzz, so just in front of the ear. I'm doing this just, it's only a small one, you can see by the size of your hand. If you wanted to do it bigger, you can, because then the pencils would be feel sharper on it, because it would be a bigger bigger picture. I'm just going to see what it was like on the small one. And then just work that round the top to where's the eye is. I think I might have the eye a bit low there. Just going to just put that little bit of light just above the eye. I'm going to fetch the eye back up. And then just come back down into the head, just gradually blending more strokes in. You can rub them in a little bit so they don't become too um, too defined. Like just there, just a little bit lighter, a few more strokes just coming down towards the, the top of the, the snout, the, the nose. A white. I don't want the white to jump out too much, but I want the sharpest whites to be on the eye. Um, but I'll just use some loose flicks again, just just to lift it away from the ears, just putting in edges, just to lift it away from the ears. And then just one or two, just worked into the colours here. So you're just getting a lighter feel just above the, the nostrils there. And that lighter feel just above that eye. And that lighter feel just above that eye. Now then, you need to sharpen it, but I don't really have the means I to get. I'll try sharpening it with the pencil sharpener, the electric. No, it doesn't, it just stubs it. Um, so the whiskers and things would be a flick, but I think I need to get a, a good blade and sharpen these pencils to as near as a point as I can get before I do decide to put the, um, the actual whiskers and that in. So I'm just going to go around the outside of that eye. And I, like I said, I've, I'm just going to fetch the eye up a bit, so I'm just going to draw that curve in there. So 
come farther up because I think the eye was just a bit too low down. Just sort of fetch some highlights just away from it. And a few flicks just around the edges. We, we already had the brown in there that we blended, so you just need that sort of sense of it getting a little bit lighter, but not too much, just around there. Again, it's a matter of blurring it behind, the, behind here, so this and them are the sharpest points going. <laughs> Just round, just on the inner part. And I'm going to have to stop to sharpen these pencils up. Just round the inner part, not the outside edge, but just round the inner part of the the dark eye. There's just a s sense of light. Can you see it? Just that little sense of light edge, just there, which sort of goes up to there. Like that. And then you want the eye in. So we'll put it in in black. Curves over. Goes down and then angles off a bit. We'll put it in in black, hard black, to get the, the definition of it. But we'll put a bit of light, a bit of light into the centre of it and to the top of it, just to give it a bit of glow. Nice and sharp, just curve it round the top a little bit like that with the black. And then just with a sort of a pale grey blue, blue, just to soften it in. Like that. And then you can just go back with a very sharp black, just in there. But again, you do need, whoops, just smudged it there. You do need to um, keep these pencils sharp. I can see that. A little bit down there, just across the top. So I'll get this eye in. In a second. I need to sort of come down here a bit and get some warmer stubs in. Just down this sort of like a, a brown. And darken into here a bit more. So just above the nostril and just going towards the eye with a darker brown, just sharpen up some harder black browns into there. Especially around where you're going to put the, the light part of the nose. Make it really strong with a, a brown around that edge. Like that. And then a little bit of the lighter orca and just lighten that area up and from the edge just lighten it up there and take the lighter orca out as a curve down now you're sort of curving it downwards I'll come back to that, I just want to get the eye in properly first. So I'm going to use the very light orchid. And I've got no point, so I'm just going to draw it in there. I'm going to find a blade and see if I can sharpen these points. So I'm just using the light orchid just to curve around down into the corner of the eye, like the outside of the eye. And drag a few lighter bits off from it. The 
and she's down around there. Well, you don't want to use white, you use a little bit of white into it, but you don't want to use a hard line of white, otherwise your, your white of your eyeball won't stand out. Just want to go there and then just very lightly go into it. Sharpen it just around the top and coming down, just sharpen it. And it's just a, it's just an ivory, like a, a very light a very light um yellow orchid ivory pencil, plenty of white into the mixture. And then there's just that little sense of grey just in there, so I've just left that a little bit and just sort of just drag the grey around the bottom of the eyelid like that, and just a hint of it just coming around that top edge. It's all right. Right, black, go just round that top edge with the black. I'm going to have to sh go and sharpen it in a second. I will in a second after I've got this first done. And then just a sharp line down to the edge, like that. A very fine line around that outside edge, right? A line across the top and then a bulk of black down to the bottom. Join up with that with there. Bulk of black in there. And the sharpness just just Follow that line there, like that. Follow that line up there and just carry it on to a sharper edge, like that, into the corner of the eye. A bit of grey just around the top, just there, coming out, so it's just sort of a softer shadow just around that top area there, like that, just there. And use the grey underneath this sort of just the bottom, just get a little bit of light just into the bottom area. Can you see? Just that little sense of light into there. And then you want one or two just black marks. Into there. And then you need the white. I need the white, so you make a nice white arc just there. Can you see it just along the top? Might have to put the black back in across it. Nice sharp white. This is why I don't want too much white. In fact, you know, there could be too much there, it could blur it. Don't want too much white, otherwise, you get uh, you have no the white itself there on the eye isn't doesn't look sharp enough. Curving it round. That little touch into the corner like that. And I may just put a, a little light line just into there. Go back to the black and just sort of draw a line through there. I think the black needs to be a bit broader. Which means the white needs to come over that way a bit more. Like I said, you could do this with coloured pencils. The problem is, with the coloured pencils, is getting the white over the top of them. I think 
because coloured this paper has actually good. You can use coloured pencils on this paper, and it's actually good because it takes a lot of layers. You can build it up without actually filling it. After a while, with coloured pencils, the wax comes to the top, and you can't get any more white on it. And that's that's the problem. I think that looks all right. I'm just going to take that eye just a bit higher on the eyebrow, just sharpen it up a bit up there a bit more. Not down the outside edge, but just under the top like that. That's better. That's better. And then just carry on round. Use a, a, a light brown. Sorry if the clack of the pencils keeps coming. Just use a, a, a lighter brown round the edge of the eye and just pull away from it. A little odd touch just in there just to create that little sense of shadow underneath. And then you're pulling away with shorter stabs like that. You make it just that little bit, even if you have to use a line, just make a line so just a bit more sharper on the back of that eye and then just pull that line away a little bit. So you're just making it sharp around that far side and down there. Just pulling lines away like that. I think you can put the odd stronger one in here and there, up there. And there's a bit of brown in there. Like I said, by browning, by blending the colours in, you create a, a, a shade underneath that that means you don't have to draw every pencil stroke in which is what we were doing generally with coloured pencils. But as I said, it's years since I've used these type of pencils. I, I think the first couple of years when I first started making a living, that's what I was actually doing more than anything, drawing people's portraits and animal portraits, dogs, dead dogs, pigeons, dead pigeons. Odd one or two darker lines just round there, like that, and then use the, the, the lighter orca and start to fetch the light stabs in. And you're following that line, sort of following the way that the, the fur is lying. Come back in and fit one or two darker ones in here and there. Just leave a little bit of shadow there and just come in outside. So you've just got a little sense of shadow there. I need to get a bit warmer down there, that's more orangey, so I'll have to get probably get some warmer colours into that area. So I'll just get a, a nice sort of orangey colour. Take it up into the eye a bit. Don't leave it too prominent under there. Just sort of blend it in a little bit, but leave it more prominent, a bit of light in there, I think. Just around that top area. Now you can start using longer strokes as you come away around here, because obviously the fur is lying longer. This is orange, but I'm going, to, I'm going to tone it down. I don't want it to be too uh, too bright. I'm 
Bueno, sí. Just gonna blend that a bit and then I'm actually going to just blend it in a little bit more so it's not the strokes aren't so prominent. Put a little bit more of it. I'm going to go in and stop in a second and just sharpen these find a blade down in the garage and come back and lay it up. So I'll just stop that for a second like that. I'll just put Oh, a bit sharp, but they aren't that easy to get dead sharp. I'm just going over the reds with this orchid just to blend it in a bit and tone it down. Because I think it's just a bit too red. out to the right to the left hand side there just above the neck put one or two one or two darker browns in just here and there down just some shorter strokes just going out just round there As you get further down, you can make longer ones because you you sort of got the longer set of fur just there. And then got the lighter orca all together. some longer strokes here and there, just at the edges, just brightening them up a little bit and then gradually blend it back up towards the top of the edge of the eye, so you're just getting a bit of light around that edge there. It's all you have to just get catching a little light fringe and a little light fringe, like an edge of light just there. And then gradually just fetch it down to meet this. I think that wants to be just a bit more um, yellowy, I think, just around here, just a little bit more yellowy. So I've just got a yellow one, I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit more, just around there. Just a few looser strokes. And then as you're coming round into the, the light from down here, get a, a stronger, lighter edge just there, curving away like that. And just gradually fetch that back in with strokes heading upwards. two strokes through so that you break the lines up a bit. And actually there, just where the, the nose sort of starts there, you want a, a, a yellow area in just above the, the mouth, just there. I want a few sort of stabs of the of the yellow. I'm going to go in with a bit of orca on that. 
so that it's not bright. So just turn down a little bit. I'm just going to use the orca into that. that orchid just around the top edge there going towards the tree sort of warm it up as it's coming around into the shadow a bit just use a little bit of just gonna use a little bit of the orangey red again just to blend this in And then the, dark, the darker brown, the darker brown to get a harder edge. I mean, we, we put the, the side of the trunk in. So now all you need to do is push out from that side of the trunk into the, the reds and yellows you've used and just push it hard with softness pressure as you're pulling outwards from it. And then sharpen hard above the edges there like that. And you've got part of the, the hand, I think, coming out like that. Down to there. You put that in strong. Put that in strong. And then just get a, a little bit of orangey colour and just a little sense of light into parts of it like that. Just, just to, to lighten it up in a few bits. Right, I want the really lighter one now, um, there it is, this is the really pale orca, and just picking up some lights, one or two just then, back of his shoulder, just there, but here's where it, it more stands out, just as it's coming across the front there. One or two sort of shorter stabs. And then just keep going over that so you just sort of blend it in a little bit. And as you're coming towards the underneath of the chin, lighten it up. I think we need just a few more of light in here and there up there so I'm just going in with a white with some shorter stabs it won't jump out as much because I'm not putting as much pressure on it. just trying to get a few stabs of light into that area right so you want the lighter orca first and you're just going to go to the top of the snout like that with this very light orca pencil and push upwards. I'm just going to try to, it's difficult getting these sharp, I'm, I'm, I'm doing them in and then I'm here trying to sharpen these up and come back with a sharper edge afterwards. So I'm just getting the light round that right hand side of the nose. Just there, and then it wants to be a bit more yellowy orchery just down there. Just a bit more orange into there. Sort of in front of the darker background that we put in. 
I'm just going to fill it in and then I'm going to put lighter bits in. And that's got to sort of come down and go under. So you've got the you've got the chin coming along there. And that's going to be the light bit. So it needs to come down to about there. And then you'll lighten it up as it goes around. Now you can use that same colour just to go into the start of the top of the nose. Like that. And then a few bits just around the outside edges. Then get your really light ochre and just push that light out. Towards the eye. <coughs> light around the top there and a bit of light just in the top part of the nostril there the top part of the nose just that little bit of harder light into there <coughs> Excuse me. and then you want sort of a a pinky color in for the for the nose itself so a little bit of paler pink just into here and just blend it in first, just shade it in, because it's not sort of lines, just shade it in, then it wants to come out to that edge there, thin, thin it out as it's coming out to there, and then sort of take it back. And the line just goes up there like that, just a little sense of the line. A little bit of shading around where it's got to be. And then just get a, a sort of a paler, paler brown and just shade into that on the right hand side. So you're darkening it down a little bit. You're just effectively nulling the pink down a bit. We'll go over it in a second and, and lighten parts of it down. Lighten parts of it up is what I meant. And then I'm coming back to the pink I'm just going to, that's not pink, going back to the pink when I can find the pink, that is the pink. Go back to the pink and just push this in. I'm going to use a light over it just to, it's a little bit darker just in that centre area. Like that. And then I'm going to use a lighter orker again to sort of blend into that now and rather than lines I'm, sh I'm shading it in I'm not put much pressure on but I'm shading this in rather than actual physical hard pressed lines I'll, I will do some of them but the moment I'm just sort of blending this in so that you get a you get a rounds to it and soften so it's not dead hard so I don't want it to be bitty and like hairs I want it to be soft but there are some little areas you need to sharpen up here and there especially just in that sort of middle area just the, the top of the nose just there top of the nostrils lighten it up coming round from the sort of blend in from that side lighten it up a little bit Like that and then you want some dots in if you could just little dots into there it's very difficult with I'm getting a hard point I'm gonna have to practice sharpening these things up There's a white just at the top there, just to get that little bit of light in the top of the, the nostril, just there. And then just dots. Dots of white across the top area there. Little 
sort of stabs down into it. Not long strokes, just little stabs down into it. And then stabs farther out where the, where the whiskers are coming from, just a bit, few more lighter patches just out there. And a few lighter patches just pushing away upwards. Not much pressure when you're doing that, it's just a gentle touch. Right, we need to get the sort of a darker edge to this now. So you want a, a sort of a, a more redder pencil as opposed to an orangey pencil. And just darken down that centre bit just there, just a few little shades, just shade it in very lightly down the middle, in between them two lighter patches that you put. And then shade in, just scrumbling in very lightly, round the bottom, and then a harder dot here and there. Sort of blend that a bit. I don't want. Uh, I want the uh, sense of edge on the nose, but I don't want it to be. I don't want to be too sharp. I'm just going to use that strong red to come round the, the bottom edge of the of the nostril. Just using that stronger red there. That line up like that. And a little bit of shadow into there. And then I'm going to use the same red for the moment and just draw the nostril. So I'm going to come down from about here. Actually, I could have done with more space between the eye and the nostril here. I'm, just, I'm going to make this nostril a bit smaller. I'm just going to come in there. Just in there like that. Because I think I've just I haven't got enough gap in there. I'm just going to get the lighter colouring and just push the lighter colouring out a bit more and back in. So it, it sort of there's not much transition between between this area and the actual nostril coming in. A little bit orangey. A little bit orangey. If I can find it, orangey. A little bit orangey just into there and into there right get a, a nice black and get this bottom of this nose defined so it curves down and just starts just above it and curls under underneath like that sort of starts down a little bit just gets broader there like that and then just a, a little line there like that and then blend that out uh, I'll just use a, a sort of orangey color just blend that out. If I can find an orangey colour, there we go. <coughs> I'm just going to push this out from the black. Like that, and just warm, soften it just gently. You just sort of soften that up into the nose so it feels as though it curves down into shadow underneath rather than being so hard. You can have a hard line at the edge, but you want to just blend it. So just pulling that out a little bit more orange coming from that way more orange out there just get the black again I just need to get that um, I just 
just need to get that line harder. I'll get the black a bit stronger, a bit sharper. Just sharpen some of the blacks into the eye a bit more. Lift that out. And then with a sort of a strongest brown, just get an edge around here. Make this darker. You can make a line. You can make a line around that edge of the, the nostril. And then just carry the line down darker just pull it out and just carry it around darker leaving that orangey patch just there and just shade that out a fraction and just lose it just sort of blend it out and just lose it i'm just going to put a little sense of dots just in the center area center area of the nose a bit Right, get your lighter colouring um, and just come round the outside edge of this what you've just put in and just blend it outwards, lighten it outwards. So it's not so strong and just blend into it and gradually just soften that and lose that down into this area here, just blend that in. pushing it down. Now you, you want to make the edge of this quite quite bright so that it so just a few flicks out with the very light orkery one. So you're just creating a, a real sense of light on the edge of the the outside edge of the nostril there. Just coming down to the you don't need to take it all the way down, it's just this top area here. And once I've sharpened up my pencils I'll have a go at two and the the whiskers. Just going to dot a little bit of light in into the nostril just to create some little sort of sense of skin tones just into there. Just there where it comes out, so it just gets a bit brighter, just there and just up there. But get a, get a white to come down from here and just create that sense of whiter longer whiskers just there just a few little whiskers here and there you can brighten that up just as it comes around the outside edge take the whiskers out right a little bit of brown we're coming down coming out from under the nose and making just above the mouth just here you can draw it in if you want with the brown be careful you don't make him laugh so don't make it too curved up otherwise you'll have a laughing squirrel him out this way a bit more I'm just going to use a grey to come out from there so I'm just breaking a grey out down into the face and got some grey there and some little bits of grey coming down just above it Get a black, a nice clean black, and get a hard edge. Just thin, don't make it too thick. Across there, and then instead of going up, just sort of take it that way a little bit. So it just sort of starts to turn down over, rather than up over. And make it a little bit broader. 
bring it broad just on the right hand side like that right so you want a, a little bit of grey just above and then you want some lighter orca just above so get you it's just a matter of swapping fences around as i say they get you need to have find some i'm going to have to find some means of sharpening these better it's not so bad if you're doing a really big picture the edges aren't aren't as thin but when you're doing a small one like this just need to get a bit darker rear just under there I use a little bit of black just touches in there just little touches of black just on that right hand side so just creating a sense of whiskers here sort of like the the edges where the whiskers come from you see what I mean the, sort of the blacker lines the pores where the, head, the whiskers come from. And then just go back over that with the white. Just pull the white down a bit, a few sort of flicks. A few sort of whiskers down here and there. And you take the whiskers just across the, the mouth, don't. Uh, don't stop at the mouth, sort of lift them across to break it up. And gradual sense of light just under the mouth just sort of blending it back in so it's, it's just feeling like the lip going in just blending it back yeah let's see where we were sun's coming through again i may have to stop again uh i'll try and get the, the, the white in down here so you want it underneath the chin when it's coming away from the from the bottom of the mouth there you want a, a lighter feel in places and drag some dark lines down but you want it just to have that lighter edge just there on the bottom sort of lip leave the grey that way it was blended in before and just go underneath so if you were to come along here and just sort of carry on here like this you would be coming to the bottom of the, the face the bottom of the chin and just sort of teasing it back up into that area there. And just gradually teasing it out into the neck. and just blend use the grey to blend in the dark parts underneath that lip in with the light and just blending it in just scrumbling it really rather than anything hard we'll put some harder lines in after but you're just sort of scrumbling this in so you're just sort of blending it into that light patch and I'll just go back over that and just fetch out a little bit more sense of light I'm just very loosely scrumbling into there. Right, just get a, a sharper one and just make one or two harder lines, just flicks just underneath. The light's coming round again. Two flicks. And this is just the 
grey, just sort of making some little darker bits just under there. Then get the, the very light orca. An ivory pencil would do this if you've got an ivory. Just a little bit of blending just there, just little touches just there. Into there. And then just I'm just gonna use a little bit of warm yellow just to just to put a little bit of colour in just under the mouth, just there, just put that bit of light colouring in. Just take that over to that side, like that. And we need to just get the grey again and just get a, a little sense of a, a shadow just under there. Hard. So you get just just getting that sense of the, that's the lip, and you just get that sense of shadow just underneath. Oh, the sun's gone a bit there. That's better. Take that down, right? And get your your really light a bit. Put one or two flashes of the light a bit into that. Don't worry about the the final long ahead. I'm going to really sharpen your pencils up before I even attempt them. And a little bit of lighter just on the outside edges just there we might have to darken that down before we do that let that through there and then i think you can go to your white and get your white as bright as bright as you can around here about there so it's, it's quite quite a nice bright area just there so fill it in fetch it up into the neck with a few loose <coughs> strokes like that but fill this in we can we can soften it down with a bit of grey and drag it in the direction we want after we've got it done A light touch, just ever so light, just in this area. I'm hardly put any pressure on. I'm just sort of, just creating a lighter edge just there. And the same here, just blending these these sort of greys and whites together in the shadowy area. Pale of grey and just blend that in. A little sense of it, just a little bit darker, just there where the chin's crossing a bit. One or two lines out there, like that. I'm just going to soften that nose a bit. I've just do want light that curve of black around that nose. I'm just gonna go into it a bit and just soften it. Excuse me, so it doesn't stand out so prominent. Right, we need a I would use a black to come underneath the chin. just in touches, just to get started really. And then dark brown, dark brown. And 
fetch the dark brown away. And you, you, what you're creating here is the shadow, actually, of, of the, the head onto the shoulder. So it wants to be strongest nearer the, the chin, the point of shadow, and then gradually it blends out as it goes away. So all you're doing is just leaving a bit more gap between the strokes. So you're just leaving a little bit more gap. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and fetching that round like that. And you can do the same for up here. Use the use the black just to get a nice hard edge around the side of the tree trunk. And sort of push it away from the tree trunk, push it towards the squirrel, and sort of stabs just following the, the direction of the first, so it's sort of stabbing that way here, and then its arms coming down and round, so that the sort of, it gets darker underneath here, which is where the sense of the arm and shoulder is, and coming back up to there. I'm just using the, the black at the moment, I'm going to change over the browns in a minute. So I'm just using the black, odd stab of black here and there. Strong around the outside of the tree trunk. dark there and then get a, a brown a strong brown first it's already started the brown up here and, and you're just following blending that back up to there gently just following this angle round Two longer lines. A longer amount obviously of fur just coming down here. Blend that in so it's in the shadow like that with the brown. And then just get your grey and just grey that, just find a, a few greys just into the edge there as it's coming down round the uh, around the back of the tree. So just a few flicks of grey. I have to keep remembering to move the picture up for you. A few flicks of grey, a few bits of brown in there, a few sort of flecks. Just a little bit of light, not much, just a odd stab here and there just to create a little sense of some of the, the hairs down in the bottom. Don't even a line here and there. Don't get too don't make it too bright. Right, we need to get into the, the sort of the throat there. So you want a you want a red in there, a strong red in there, like a cadmium red. And you can blend that cadmium red as you're doing it back into the the darks you've done. So you're sort of pushing it into the darks. Just leaving it blacker below. Don't go all the way down. Just sort of push it in. Like this. And then just sort of shorter stabs. Just sort of creating a texture of the fur sort of directing it in angles to the way it's going. <clears throat> I don't know if my voice sounds a bit strange, I feel as though I've got a bit of a cough. Hmm. 
No orange. It's all building up. And you're just doing the same. You're going into the into the reds and just sort of stabbing outwards and then the odd longer stroke as you're coming make it just the odd longer stroke as you're going down into the darkness hair even there off the, the the arm a little lighter just above the shadow because the longer hairs here you can crisscross some of them so you can put them a little bit longer even there as you're coming down through there now we need to lighten, <coughs> lighten this up with a bit more orca. Just, I'm only drawing this when you can see this. I'm only drawing this small, so that's why you can't put as many fine lines in unless I, I come back afterwards. If I find a blade, I'll come back afterwards and just see if I can get some sharper lines in here and there. Going to darken down with use the black just under the chin a bit there, and then just sort of softly blend away, but just creating that sense of shadow. So I'm just gradually and just you can you can use the black. It seems like you've done the light. You can use the black just to flick in some longer hairs, pa pa patches of dark just here. And then a brown in just to get some sharper, <coughs> excuse me, sharper edges here and there with the browns. And then use the orange. Just to flick in some little bits of light here and there, especially up here. And then a yellowy one in. long ones and some just sharp especially with the lighter ones just some sharp flicks in just to create tips little sense of light just coming out there the really lighter one, the yellow, the very light one, and just create some sharper flicks here, and it just stabs, just in the direction of the fur. And 
and then some brighter oranges. we can do with this now with the whiskers etc so I'll go and have a look and see where we can get I don't I don't think you need to use a white for the whiskers on some of them you can do but I think you need to maybe use a, a sort of a brown or a black for the darker ones so I'm just going to try and flick some out There's one or two going up, up here And the real way, I'll just take a little bit farther, the real way is just to sort of flick. Like that, one or two darker ones just from this edge here. And then use some of the lighter ones. Take the edges off. Probably a white just to lighten up a few little flicks. Darken slightly darken, maybe a little bit of lighter brown, and just get a little bit lighter colouring in parts of them whiskers so they're not so intense in places. I think that's all right, really. I think that's okay. Right, do the tree. I'll zoom back out a bit so that you can see it better and uh, we'll just do the tree I think that's all right we'll just see if I can get the bit sharper white just into there now I've just sharpened the pencil up a bit I might just flick a fraction into that side one or two smaller whiskers into there More brightness on the top of the nose. Right, <coughs> tree trunk, tree trunk. So we used a, a, a grey to get start that off a brown. We can use the black and just create some solid uh, areas here and there. Um, just darken. Make sure you've got it dark in in the edges of the tree so there's some darker parts just on on the, the edges even if you have to push some dark lines outwards for them and then i'll just do this i suppose to be quite honest in a second i could use the pan pastels again to get a softer area so maybe i'll just use the the pastels, find out where the colours are. I want the browns and the greys. There we go. Brown and orchid. I'll just fetch them in a bit for you. I'll zoom out a bit more just so you can see this area. One sec. There, so you can see them and the thing. And I'll get a brush. I'll use a, a bigger brush, 
So sort of a stubby bush and just build up the pastel so just using the brush to put it on in patches. down here just really the same as doing the the actual squirrel just put it on we'll blend some lights in might have to use a soft putty rub around here to get rid of some of the pens some of that pencil a little bit farther down and then just fetching in some of the lighter got to get a little bit more contrast on this so it's not the same colouring totally as the squirrel. So I'm just going to get a bit more grey. I want a dark colouring but I can't, I have not, uh, these are the only colours I've got and I don't think I've got a dark very dark and much I'll, I'll just use this brown again just get a bit stronger I think that's all and I'm just going to blend it with my fingers just sort of rubbing it in and like I say it's like a velvet you feel it feels as though you're rubbing your hands over a bit of velvet So got there and then just start using the pencils to uh, to really sharpen it up so I'll use some harder browns in places and just draw in some darker patches it's sort of a sense of uh, bark and grey and so it, it doesn't matter about what's on the actual photograph just uh, just suggest some bits into here. So sort of sense of grey and coming down. Like that, just into there. And then just vary the, the colours really just to get little what I'll do is just go above the, the browns you put in and just using the orcas just above it so you're getting this sense of lighter bark with a bit of shadow underneath it I'm going to really darken this down in edges with some black so that it does stand different to the to the squirrel so this is just sort of really blocking everything in and then the lighter orca same as what you've done on these colours except you're just sort of just trying to create some edges and I'll darken into these so they look a bit more bark bark like because when Peters took the photograph, he's obviously obviously sharpened up on the eyes and so blurred everything else out. So you've got a more a more blurred feel to this this back. Now come up to the edge and lighten it up to the edges of where the the squirrel is. The squirrel wants to go behind, so you want these lighter edges. To emphasize the edge of the tree and we sort of shade it out a little bit just 
gradually sort of losing and blend it in with your fingers so there's a, a gradual blend away from the tree. And then get your black and just use your black to emphasize some harder bits of grain here and there. Especially underneath the light, so you're just sort of going under the light a bit and just creating a little sense of broken grain down the tree. Rub it in a bit because it would be better just slightly blurred than being too uh, too dramatic because I don't want it I don't want it to compete with the squirrel's head. So I'm just putting it in a few harder grains here and there. sense of the texture shield it out a little bit over that side A light, a, a very light ochre colour over it in a second, and then white. So now, so you're just sort of creating lighter patches just around the edges, so just into there and into the back. So you just round the tops of the blacks and just sort of taking it around and up. Two lines just it just if you just do one or two lines like that it just gives a sense of the tree bark going farther on and lighter not the not the darker but not filling not filling it in so much so just lightening up into these edges where the darks are sort of angling them up a bit still blur it out a fraction so that it just becomes softer dry the pencil on. I'll have to use my hands. What's happening is the pencil's getting picking up some of the pastel from underneath and it's sort of muckying the ends a bit. So a bit of tissue paper would probably be what you want just to clean the edges of the clean the edges of that side, edges of the pastel pencil as you're going along. And again, just a few sort of sense of bark coming out. Dragging the edge down that way a bit. Just going to blur into it and then I'm just going to put some sharper lines in. So I'm just blurring it down because I don't want it. I don't want it to compete too much. Just blurring the edge. And then what I would do is just get a, a lighter orca and just lightly scrumble into it. You can hard, I'll go in a bit. The whole idea is just to sort of blend this together a bit without actually pressing on, I'm just sort of scrumbling over the blacks a bit and into the lights, even into them yellows, them like like the yellows there. And it's just sort of pushing it back, blending it in a little bit without actually, wait a second, without actually uh, pressing on, just toning it down so there's a Film over it if you if you know what I mean. <coughs> it's 
still looks black on there, but it, it's actually toning down on, on the drawing as far as I think it's just the, the way the lights are. Just lift it out in various patches like that, so you just sort of finish it outwards. I mean, what you can do is, if you want, you can put the mount right up close to the edge if you want. You can leave it open. I mean, I'll try it. Or you can put the mount edge a bit harder under them. Or you can put the mount edge over them a bit. So you crop it closer or you vignette it out. Just need that yellow not to be so... That trunk edge not to be so bright. Not all the way down, anyway, it just wants to be in parts. Right, and then you can use the white and you can just... You can just flick in little bits just to emphasise little parts of the tree edge. I mean, it's just a matter of, it's a little bit brighter there, I think. Just a few broken flicks, just above your blacks. This is just the white, just creating a sense of bark on the edge of the tree a little bit. Make an odd pitch just a little bit lighter there. Still feel as though I want to turn it down. Right, I'm just going to zoom out, because I still want this not to be as bright as that, so I'm going to actually get the grey again with the thing, and just get a soft brush. That other brush was a bit harder, just going to get a softer... I can't get one that I fancy, there you go, a softer brush. And I'm, that's not grey, that's some of the grey. Wait a second. Just got to find the grey pastel. Like I say, I've never used these for a long time. In drawers, that's blue. I've got purples, I've got purples. Reds, crimsons. I'm sure I have a grey. There you go, grey. A grey. Payne's grey, if I remember rightly. I'll just cover that brown up. I mean, these last forever, these things. I'm only using them for dusting. So I'm just going to use the grey and just sort of lightly dust. Mainly around the edges. Leave it lighter over to the to the right near the squirrel, you can turn it down a little bit. But just this brush really is a, a watercolour brush. Can you see what it's meant for? Is a sharp point there and holding a lot of water there. But it's just summed up, just picked up off the tin. So I'm just using it to tone down the tree. Basically, I don't want the colours to be. as bright as the squirrel so I'm leaving the light showing a bit like that but I'm just dusting over it and then I might just rub it in a little bit let's try rubbing it in a little bit I think that's 
that's it. I'm just going to put an odd couple of finer edges in. Get that lid on there properly. Uh, it just means I'm just going to use a sharpish brown and just flick in some little flicks here and there just to. I'm using the, the, it upright because the point is gone, so I'm just using it upright and just sort of making some thinner cracks here and there. focus to be on the head not, not, not on the tree so that's why I'm just gradually just putting lines in blending them in so there's a suggestion of a tree there I think that's all I think might just need a few little sharper stubs of black in there Get a mount. Let's see what that. I'm, I'm just getting a, a small. Um, I don't know where the mount is there. Just getting a small 16 by 12 mount, nice and clean, just to see what that looks like. There you go. See, you can, if you wanted, you could crop it so it was hard up against the edge, but you'd have to fetch this in a bit farther. Oh, I don't know, it looks all right like that, just to ask you, but I think that's probably better, just sort of vin vignetted out a little bit. So that's pastel pencils. Um, like I said, if that's only a small picture, you can see the, the actual image there is only, that square there is only 10 by 7, um, so you can see how small it is. If you want to get more sharper detail, if you're doing like a bigger one with more hair, texture which I will do you you need to do it bigger so the pencils because these pencils are so they, you don't you can't get them to a great sharp point like that but that, I think that's come out all right I'll just uh, stick a signature on it if I can without spoiling it uh, I'll just stick a light signature just something down there to balance the picture That will do. I think that looks all right. So there you go. 